So if you guys watch my videos, you guys know I like deploying to AWS for all my Next.js applications, and I use SST to get that stuff deployed out. Um, I happened just by chance to wake up and look at my email. It said that I have a budget that's kind of gone over. So like on your billing dashboard in AWS, you can set up budgets. And I set mine to be like $10 or something. So it will email me if I go over that budget. So I logged in and I saw that my bill was $269, which is obviously a lot more than I paid from the previous month. So I dove into what's going on here and I wanted to figure out what service got this huge amount of a charge. And so scrolling down here, you can see CloudFront is almost at $260. And if you go and zoom into US East, you'll see I got over 207 million requests, which ended up being $207. And then down here for bandwidth, almost uh, over a terabyte of bandwidth. So that was kind of disappointing. I went to CloudFront to try to figure out what distribution was getting hit that hard. And it turns out it was my icon generator application. So I went into, I think, monitoring. And then I clicked on my distribution. And let me zoom back like two or three days. Yeah, here it is. So you can see my average request is like 400, 300, but in this time period, it went up to about 8 million requests over a period of like an hour. I think this is like an hour span. So it started at 11.23 and it ended at 14.11. So that's like, what, three hours of traffic? One, two, three. But during this time, I think I was asleep. So I probably got the email when I was sleeping and I didn't wake up to see this. And luckily for me, the traffic stopped even before um, I saw the alarm. So I'm assuming this was a DDoS. If you look at how many requests, I mean, they're making like 7 million requests every minute. Unless it's just some person who has like two machines just wrote a script to keep hitting my API. The second thing we can look at is uh, popular objects. That gives you a little bit more information about like what was getting hit so often. And if you go over here, you'll see that the community endpoint was hit 215 million times. And these are all basically cache hits. So luckily this community page is I think ISR or ISG. So every hour I regenerate the page so you can see like the community icons. So if I just go here, this is what it looks like. And no matter how many times you refresh it, like this is cached in CloudFront and users will only ever see this amount of icons, right? But regardless, you're still charged for every request that's over HTTPS and hits CloudFront. So there's a couple of takeaways I got from this. Um, honestly, I was just being lazy and I should have set up WAF. So if I go to WAF, Amazon provides a way to basically put protection over your distributions or your services. You can set up rules that are basically applied to block people. For example, one of the rules that I set up is rate limiting. So if I actually go back to that distribution over here, security, I'll go to my WAF. And so you see, if I go to rules here and click limit requests, there is a rate limiting setup to basically say, Every five minutes, you can only do 10,000 requests. This might actually be a little too high. I could probably drop it down. I haven't really put in the time to figure out like what the average user's request per five minutes is. But the idea is if you were to come in and write a script to just keep hitting anything in my distribution, this will kick in and it'll block the user until their window basically resets. Now, I will say I don't think WAF protects you from DDoS specifically. I think you do need to upgrade to AWS Shield which has more things set up in place to protect you from DDoSs. But if you look over here, you can see that the monthly price is $3,000 a month. So that's obviously not gonna happen. The second thing I wanna point out with WAF is that it does cost additional money, right? So for every ACL you have, you have to pay $5 a month, and then you have to pay a dollar a month for every rule, and then you pay 60 cents per million requests, I believe. I'd have to go look at the pricing page. But it does add additional costs on top of your application. So that's unfortunate because now all of my applications that used to basically run for free, I decided to just add a WAF ACL in front of all them just so that I never get charged another 200, 400, 500, whatever. If this were to keep on running, I would have been charged more and more and more. So let's talk a little bit about how this was set up because you can go through and click the UI and get this set up. But I like using infrastructure as code or specifically, I like using SST to deploy my Next.js applications. And the way you can get this WAF instance set up is you basically create a new WAF v2, and then you make this ACL. And then here is the format of it. Basically, I need to say this is a CloudFront type of ACL. And then you make a rule here. And this rule is saying, I need you to make a rate-based statement 
for every 10,000 requests, check by IP. You can also check by like various headers and other things. But I'm saying just make sure you check the IP and if it goes over that 10,000 requests, go ahead and block people. And again, it's five minutes, but I think you can decrease that interval to 30 seconds if you want to. Okay, so once you make that ACL, you can basically point it to your Next.js site down here. Line 78 is saying basically use the ARN of the ACL and point it to the distribution's ARN. So that's how you can hook that all together. Some of my final thoughts are if you are going to be hosting on AWS using CloudFront or whatever service, make sure you have some type of WAF and Shield setup. You might say, oh, I don't want to pay $5 a month to get this set up and just add more costs onto my deployment. Um, well, it's a trade-off, right? The risk is if someone were to write a script and just keep hitting your distribution or a DDoS, well, guess how much you're going to pay now? You're going to pay a lot of money. My second remark is I'm starting to reconsider my choice of using AWS at all for my side projects. Now, I will say at work, we use AWS for everything and we have like WAF set up to protect our sites. And it's not my money that I'm using to pay for the site, right? So it's fine that if the client or the company wants to pay to have this stuff set up. But for my side projects that honestly don't make much money, I'm starting to reconsider why not just host everything on a single VPS? Like I could just go rent a really cheap VPS for $10. I guarantee you I could probably have five of these Next.js containers running on them because it doesn't use that much memory. And then I'll just go ahead and set up like a caddy load balancer in front of these. I'm assuming caddy has like an IP rate limiter built into it, like a plugin or extension. And then other than that, I could still get DDoS if I were to host on my own VPS, but I wouldn't get charged $260 for all those requests. I would lose out in the CDN because the CDN does cache your assets and reduce A, how many times your server has to return a response and B, the speed at which your UI can load because now everything is hosted on a CDN. But honestly, it's like, why not just host this all on a single VPS, not have this risk of like getting DDoS and having to pay a bunch of money with the trade-off of if my machine gets DDoS, yeah, all my applications will go down. That's what I'm currently thinking about. I don't know if I'll do that switch over, um, but if I do, I'll probably make a video on it. If there's a different way you like doing this, I know Cloudflare also provides like a, a WAF or like a DDoS protection for like $20 a month. I haven't used that yet, so I'm curious if anyone else in the comments has and how it stacks up against AWS. Now, I think everything on AWS has like Shield standard, so they do protect you from some type of DDoS attack. And so if you make like a distribution, I think it comes with Shield standard. I could be wrong about this, um, which is why I think maybe those requests just kind of dropped off. I think something kicked in and just killed off those requests. Yeah, so this blog post is saying AWS Shield standard is free. It offers DDoS protection against some of the more common layer three network layer in layer four transport layer DDoS attacks. This protection is applied automatically and transparently to your Elastic Load Balancers, Amazon CloudFront distributions, and Route 53. So I'm pretty sure that's what kicked in and killed off those requests, but still I have to pay $260 for all those requests. But yeah, that is about it. So if you guys enjoyed, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join as well if you want a place to kind of hang out and talk to some other developers. Have a good day and happy coding.